All right, folks. So uh, in today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, the entire castration process for the uh, Chinese Unix. And uh, I'll use this as an example. By the way, this is uh, roughly uh, 11 inches. So, well, don't ask me uh, how I know that. So the size is a bit of an uh, exaggeration, but uh, I'm not going to uh, show you how uh, exactly the process works. Uh, by the way, the Chinese castration process it's uh, not really castration, it's more brutal than that. I believe the proper term is called the uh, emasculation, where uh, both uh, the penis itself, along with the testicles, they're removed, okay? And uh, this is done uh, very uh, swiftly. So once a person decides that he wants to become a eunuch, and uh, believe it or not, sometimes uh, this is uh, voluntary. Back in the day, uh, there was uh, no birth control, and uh, many families had uh, you know, possibly 8, 10, or 12 children, and uh, they can't afford to raise all of them. So some of the parents, uh, they would sell their children for a small amount of cash, and uh, they would send them uh, to the royal palace. And uh, the procedure is uh, really nothing fancy at all. Uh, oftentimes, it was done with, with uh, something like a small pocket knife. It could be uh, something as uh, simple as this. But usually, before the procedure, usually uh, the penis uh, of the uh, eunuch, it, it's washed uh, beforehand. It's uh, soaked in water. And uh, sometimes what will happen is uh, these uh, surgeons, they would uh, dip uh, the penis into the water. And sometimes uh, they will add the uh, chilies into the pepper. So oftentimes what happens is the, the chilies, uh, they will act as a uh, anesthesia. So this will help uh, to ease with the pain a little bit. I doubt that uh, this actually worked. I think it would just make the process more painful. As you can imagine, trying to uh, you know, soak uh, someone's penis and uh, imagine the chili flakes uh, going up your urethra. It's probably uh, not a great feeling. And uh, everything is done uh, very swiftly. So what happens is the, once uh, the man is laying down on the table and uh, he's asked uh, one final time, are you sure you want to do this? And uh, once uh, his decision is confirmed, the surgeon simply you know, takes uh, the penis along with the testicles, lifts it up in the air, one small quick cut, and it's all over. And uh, so what happened is, if you're wondering how come, uh, so do these men not, do they not uh, bleed to death? Well, the mortality rate uh, from uh, these uh, Chinese uh, castrations was actually uh, only around uh, 2%. So 98% of the times the victims uh, would survive. And one of the tricks that the Chinese did uh, in order to lower the mortality rate was uh, to apply uh, ashes to the open wound. So as soon as they cut off uh, someone's uh, penis, they apply ashes uh, right, right to the spot. And the, so uh, the ashes that would then uh, stop the bleeding. And of course, the eunuchs, uh, they usually had uh, many health issues uh, following the surgery. For example, many of you guys ask, uh, how do these men pee? Well, sometimes what happens is uh, they probably have to use uh, some sort of a stick in order to uh, dilate their hole regularly because uh, it is an open wound, right? And your body is constantly trying to heal this wound by closing the hole. And uh, sometimes it is normal uh, that I've read stories about uh, Chinese eunuchs uh, using some kind of a straw, whether it's uh, wooden or metallic, and uh, in order to help them uh, with peeing. And obviously they have to uh, squat down. It's uh, not a very comfortable experience. And uh, if you're wondering, so w what happens uh, to the penis after it's being uh, cut off, along with the testicles? Do they get thrown out? Well, no. See, this is uh, very important uh, to the eunuchs. It's actually uh, preserved uh, in, in a jar or some kind of a container, and it's uh, given back to them. And this is also an important piece of uh, identification. This is called uh, your uh, precious, right? This is uh, your treasure. This is uh, your ball. This is a proof of the eunuchs. So when they hold uh, these, uh, they're precious. This is how they can enter the uh, imperial haram. So they can be around the, the wives and the concubines of the emperors because uh, no other man would be allowed back in the imperial haram. This is the proof that uh, they have been uh, fully castrated. And it's very normal for the eunuchs uh, to keep uh, their cut off penises, their genitals uh, underneath uh, their bed and they will be uh, sleeping beside it every single night. And usually what happens is after uh, their death, after they've served their, their entire life to the royal palace, and uh, it, at the end, they will be buried alongside uh, with their genitals, their penis and testicles. And this is because uh, these eunuchs uh, believe that uh, it is the greatest uh, shame uh, to their uh, family and to their ancestors if they were buried uh, without uh, their manhood, and uh, they will be haunted in hell for all of eternity if uh, they died without uh, their masculinity. So uh, this piece of uh, precious, this piece of treasure, the eunuchs will always keep them all the way uh, until the end. So, ladies, what do you think? You still think that uh, throughout history, uh, we have always uh, lived in the patriarchy? 
And uh, one more thing that's uh, important to mention, this uh, practice, it's uh, still very much uh, alive today in uh, 2023. They just changed the name of it. I believe uh, this is called uh, gender affirming care. Thank you guys uh, for watching this video. I hope you guys have uh, learned something new. See you next time.